came up in a book years ago called The Passover Plot, which suggested that he had been sedated on the cross, that he was removed quite early, and therefore could well have survived. That's certainly a possibility. The disciples did manage to give Jesus some kind of substance on a sponge. They filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his up and put it to his mouth. And Jesus immediately died after taking this substance. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. But oddly enough, it isn't necessary to suggest that Jesus was sedated or drugged by whatever was on the sponge in order to believe that he could have survived. There are stories of people who did survive crucifixion. The Jewish historian Josephus wrote of one of his own friends surviving crucifixion in Palestine in the first century. He's traveling out to a village named Tekoa to scout land for a Roman camp. And he notices that three of his friends are hanging on crosses. So he requests that uh, they be allowed to, uh, that they be brought down. And Titus, the Roman general, gives him permission. The three are brought down immediately and given medical care. And two of them died, but the, the third survived. So is it possible that Jesus could somehow have survived? Certainly he was speedily executed, perhaps too speedily. When you look at the story of Jesus and how he was executed by the Romans, he's on the cross for six hours. The assumption is that he's dead. The Roman soldiers check the body. Uh, there were two others crucified according to the gospel accounts and they broke the legs of those to hasten their death because the Sabbath day was coming. When they came to Jesus, they said he, he's already dead. Presumably, uh, his body's motionless, he's quit breathing. They then uh, prepare the body and put him in a tomb. And presumably it's sealed up and uh, he's dead for all practical purposes. Uh, the question though is, is he clinically dead? The question of clinical death is certainly raised by the fact that the herbs Joseph of Arimathea took into the tomb with the body of Jesus were aloes. These are healing, not embalming herbs. So could it be that Jesus was resuscitated in the tomb? A lot of modern people, I think, confuse the term resurrection with life after death. Resurrection is a uh, Hebrew idea. And it's the notion that someone is uh, in the world of the dead, which the Hebrews call Sheol, and they have uh, their body's been buried, and they resuscitate or they come back. A uh, term we might use today would be resuscitation more than resurrection. It would actually get the idea. We do have stories, both from the modern world and from the ancient world, where people appear to be dead, and for all practical purposes, they are dead. That is, they're not responding to the outside world but then they do, in fact, revive or come back. We call it resuscitation, but if you want to press the language, that would be resurrection. Whatever actually happened, the different gospel stories do all agree that the disciples saw Jesus as if he were alive. But if Jesus survived, it doesn't necessarily mean that the resurrection was a hoax or a deliberate falsehood. At the end of the 19th century, the English writer Samuel Butler, in his book on the resurrection, came up with the theory that if Jesus had collapsed in a shock-induced coma on the cross and then recovered, he and the disciples would actually have believed his recovery was a miraculous resurrection. But still has great credibility if you see it in the light, for instance, of more contemporary development. Look at the near-death experience in the United States. Something like 13 million people in the United States say they've had near-death experiences. They've seen this white light. They believe it to be some form of miracle. So the idea that in the first century when they had none of this scientific insight and they had none of these hospitals or whatever to save them, that people thought it actually makes a lot of sense doesn't make them fraudsters or shysters, it actually makes them genuine people who thought they'd witnessed a miracle. Whatever the circumstances, if Jesus was alive, then he and his disciples face a serious problem. If Jesus was placed in the tomb and somehow was revived, he himself would certainly think that was an act of the grace of God. I came right to the bars of death and was brought back. 
But now there's a practical problem. It's a political problem, actually. Romans basically do one thing to messiahs. They crucify them. It is clear that either through resurrection or resuscitation, Jesus did survive the crucifixion. But he faces a problem. He's a condemned man. The Bible is said to solve this problem with a miracle called the Ascension. Jesus is taken bodily into heaven. But the original texts are even more confused when it comes to the Ascension than they were about the Resurrection. The Ascension does not actually appear in the original form of any of the Gospels. The Ascension references in Mark are among the verses which, as we have seen, were added 200 years after the events. There is one line in Luke which reads, and was carried up into heaven. But again, this doesn't appear in all Bibles. It was, in fact, inserted simply because the Ascension is referred to in a later book of the Bible, the Acts of the Apostles. And it's always been assumed that Luke was the author of Acts. There's no Ascension in Matthew. And John's Gospel ends with the enigmatic words, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So what were the many other things that Jesus did? If the faithful knew that Jesus was in fact still alive, surely they would have shared that knowledge. And surely they must have hoped that at some time in the future, it would have been safe for Jesus to return. And evidence for that hope should be somewhere in the original text. It is. The disciples were expecting Jesus to return. They were expecting what has become known as the second coming. But this was not necessarily going to be a miraculous return. Jesus definitely went away. Whatever view of resurrection you take, resuscitation or divine miracle, in the traditional sense of belief in resurrection, he goes away. He says, I'm going away. The disciples say, can we come? He says, no. And he says, I'm going to come again. Now, what's interesting about that is normally, if someone says they're going away, they're going to come back. And you're sort of looking at your watch or your calendar, wondering, okay, he said he went away, he's going to come back. You'd take it in that uh, everyday sense. The concept of a heavenly second coming with Jesus returning on the Day of Judgment was only created after it became clear that he had not returned in that everyday sense. That key Christian idea of the second coming, that, that Jesus having come once and died and risen from the dead will come again, is very much a distinctive Christian idea. It's, uh, Christianity borrows most of its ideas from Judaism, but this is one that it sought up on its own. If you look at the Messiah tradition in, in Judaism, and obviously when Jesus was around, the Jews were expecting their own Messiah. They were expecting him to come and sort everything out, and that would be an end to it. They weren't expecting him to come, half sort things out, die go off somewhere and then come back a bit later on. This, this, is, this is really, the second coming is, is, is one of the distinctive Christian ideas. But does the concept of a heavenly second coming ignore the very matter of fact nature of some of the references to it in the Bible? A lot of those references to Jesus coming back might in fact be taken more uh, in an everyday sense of someone going away to accomplish certain mission and then planning to return when that mission was accomplished. But if Jesus did leave Palestine, France still doesn't seem a likely destination. It was, after all, a Roman colony. Some claim that if Jesus did survive the crucifixion, his first priority would be to escape from the jurisdiction of the Roman Empire. You just look at a map. Palestine is on the uh, far eastern border of the Roman Empire. If you go west, you're going right into the heart of Roman territory where we have our 15 legions stationed around the world. If you go east, you're crossing over into Parthia and you're going towards Persia eventually and India and Afghanistan, that direction. And if Jesus thought he was the Jewish Messiah, 
there was another reason why he might have traveled east.